With only a couple months left of 2024, it's time to dive in and talk about my most anticipated films for the fall, but basically just the rest of 2024. There is a stack load of movies that I am very excited for, and some that still don't have like release dates, but I'm excited for as well that may not be mentioned on this list, but it's gonna be a good time. I definitely wanna hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section, so make sure to leave yours down there. What films are you looking forward to that were not on this list that I should be keeping my eyes open on? Let me know, I can't wait to read your guys' thoughts. And without further ado, I always have some honorable mentions and two films to kind of just get right out of the way. We Live in Time and Joker 2 will not be talked about in this list, mostly because at, at the recording of this video, I'm already seeing both of them within the next three days. And to be honest with you, my reviews might be up before this video is up. I could be wrong, but still, I have to oblige to that. As well as a couple more honorable mentions, Venom, The Last Dance, actually looks really fun. Uh, I've enjoyed these Venom movies somewhat for what they are, and this one kind of looks the goofiest and the funniest out of all of them, and I'm kind of for that. One last honorable mention, Moana 2. Not fully sold on it, but I am excited to see what Disney animation is cooking up. Rolling right into my number 10 now, we have Wicked. Now, this is technically Wicked Part 1, and musicals are typically not my cup of tea. They're not my genre, but I'm always persuaded or wanting to be persuaded the other way. One of my favorite films of all time is La La Land, and that is technically a musical. And if you go throughout the rest, I'm really big into Greatest Showman. I like those movies. There, there's, there's musicals I enjoy. And for me, Wicked, I'm hoping, stuns me. I think the trailers look phenomenal for this. I've never seen the Broadway play, but I do like The Wizard of Oz. And to see a prequel film attached to that, to kind of get a new perspective of sorts, excites me. I think the cast looks good here. I think it just looks stunningly gorgeous. My only reservation is, well, it's a part one. So how is it going to go? I do know some people that have seen the movie, and I've heard great things about it. So... It has to be solidified at my number 10. It's just a little bit lower than what most people would probably include this if, you know, if they like musicals. Pulling up next at my number nine is Gladiator 2. Now, if you've been a follower of my channel for a while, you know Ridley Scott is usually not my cup of tea. There's some films of his that I absolutely love, but a majority of the time I find myself being completely and utterly de devastating and just disappointed in his movies. I think the last movie I really loved of his was The Last Duel, which was kind of surprising to me. The Martian was also great, but in general, it just seems that his films have just not been hitting. The hole in his filmography, it does disappoint, but my favorite movie of his is Gladiator. Gladiator 2, I've been a little bit nervous about, but I thought all the trailers have been phenomenal so far, blowing me away, out of the water. Everything looks great. The performances look great. And to be honest with you, I'd still, I would still be holding my reservations if it wasn't for the fact that I do know five people that I've seen this movie and all of them loved it. And I'm really hoping that Ridley Scott delivers the goods and I can come out saying, man, I loved Gladiator 2 because this is a sequel that I didn't think needed to happen. But then you give me the trailers, you give me the cast and all of it looks really damn good. And then I hear word of mouth from just some people who have seen the movie and all of them giving it high high praises. I'm really hoping it can do the same for me. But to be honest with you, I don't know if I would have it in my top 10 if it wasn't for the fact that people have hyped this up for me. Same thing with Wicked. We get into my number eight and that is Mufasa. Now Mufasa has been another one that is very interesting for me because the Lion King live action remake wasn't the biggest fan of. Very disappointing and then more on the rewatch and just thoughts it wasn't needed at all. It lacks any of emotion that the original Lion King had. And it was honestly one of the more disappointing films of the last 10 years for me. Because I have liked some of these Disney live action films. I don't think we need them, but I have enjoyed some of them. And I was hoping The Lion King, which is hailed as, you know, one of the best Disney animated films of all time, to be right up there. And it, it just didn't hit. But Barry Jenkins is directing this movie, who has made phenomenal movies like Moonlight, Bill Street. And I, I just, I have to imagine that there was something special here. Cut to D23 where we got the first trailer. That first trailer took all my worries and just threw them to the side. For some weird reason, just in this one trailer, I felt more emotion than I expected. They are changing certain things about the lore, Mufasa and Scar and certain things like that that I don't know how I'll feel until I actually see the full movie. But it gave me this emotion and not just this emotion of nostalgia, but this emotion that made me care. For some reason, some of the animals looked like they actually had emotion to them. 
And for me, Mufasa looks to be maybe particularly something special. I'm not going to say that it is. That's why it's a little bit lower on this list. But all the marketing so far has impressed me enough to go, I'm down for this. I can't wait. If nothing else. The only reason I'm excited for this is because of Barry Jenkins. That brings me into my number seven. And this one I was going back and forth on including in this list because I just got done watching the first two for the very first time. And that is Terrifier 3. This one comes out very, very soon. And for me, like, I had always been interested in these films because Art the Clown looks fun. But I'm not the biggest person on slashers, nor am I the biggest person on, like, grotesque and bloody and gory kills. And I've always heard that the first movie kind of kind of sucks now after re-watching those uh or watching them for the very first time terrifier one is fun it's kind of an homage to the 80s not 70s slasher films which is cool uh it's gory it's grotesque and uh art the clown is very entertaining but the film is very bare bones and for the budget that they had it works for that it's not one that i would probably ever re-watch though so jumping in the two overly long but it does feel like there is a perfect hour and 50 minute horror film in there like genuinely i part of me loves aspects of terrifier 2 and part of me dislikes some of them because some of it's a little bit boring like to get to the kills to get to art the clown to get to sienna but it intrigued me enough to say i can't wait for terrifier 3 and terrifier 3 i haven't seen any marketing for it except that he's dressed as santa like that, that that's it that's all i know and i'm excited there was good buzz at Fantastic Fest about this third film and that some fans will absolutely think this is the best one yet and it kind of mixes the best of the first and second. I'm all for that. I really like the lore build up in the second one and I hope we get our answers, but count me in for another Terrifier time. We get into my number six and this is another film coming out in October and that is Saturday Night. Now, this movie is just on my radar solely for the fact that I love, love, love the cast, but I also heavily love the trailer having jason reitman direct a movie like this is something that just intrigues me as well saturday night when it comes down to it and it comes down to the lore of saturday night live i love to see that this is the film showing us the early moments before the first episode ever went live and as someone who grew up watching saturday night live with my parents this kind of intrigues me to want to see this movie more like i said the cast is phenomenal the director i really enjoy a lot of his movies and the trailer just looks like a lot of fun so with that said saturday night Looks like a bomb. My number five is The Brutalist. Now, this is probably the longest movie on this list. I think it's about three hours and 45 minutes with an intermission. And I know nothing more than that. Like, I know Adrian Brody is in this. I know Guy Pierce is in this. And I know that the director of this did Vox Lux, which not everyone loved, but I really liked. And I thought that was an interesting film that made me go, I can't wait to see what that guy does next. This is his next project. And... I mean, the easiest way to say as a film fan why I'm excited about this is, again, word of mouth, buzz. Every person I've talked to that has seen this movie said it's so incredible, and it feels like one of those classic Hollywood movies that would never be made today. And I think we get a lot of that, those buzzwords a lot, but there's something centering around this movie that just feels a little bit more special surrounding that. And I don't know what it is or what the tidbit is, but it's just like every reaction, every review I've read that like lays it out like that just makes me giddy of excitement to get a film like that because so many films homage to that or homage to a point in the 70s or the 80s of classic Hollywood but I it always does feel in the end of the day something that is made to today's standards not made back in the day whether it's the methodical pacing or things like that and this movie just like the gist of it the tone everyone talking about it it just really feels that we are coming up on something that could be hailed as a classic once day i'm really excited to see with what the brutalist has to offer later this year we get into my number four though and this is sonic the hedgehog three and without bar none uh the reason this is up here is because shadow is one of my favorite video game characters of all time i think like many people i love the shadow of the hedgehog video game and sonic has kind of been a nice little surprise i enjoyed the first movie it was a big surprise for me and then the second one i got very excited for and it was awesome it worked and now with the third one it kind of seems like just from the trailer that they are really taking all those complaints and throwing it all in into what we want, which is more time with these characters. Not saying that we don't need all human aspect. I, again, some of that with James Marsden can be fun, but Shadow the Hedgehog looks amazing. And it looks like they're doing and paying great homage to his backstory, 
which is something that I was very surprised that they were even going to do, but they are. And I'm excited to see how they build up this character as well as build up the story surrounding everything else, building up more lore into this. And Sonic the Hedgehog 3 just looks phenomenal. The action looks great, and it looks like the pinnacle of what this franchise could be. But also, weirdly enough, the start of something new in this franchise, which I don't know why, but it feels special. But get into my number three, and this is James Mangold's brand new movie, A Complete Unknown, starring Timothy Chalamet as Bob Dylan. We've seen that trailer, and that's all I needed to see. I know, it's a Bob Dylan biopic. Bob Dylan is a national treasure. But so is James Mangold to me in terms of the directing spear. Timothy Chalamet is a fantastic up-and-comer. He's worked with Austin Butler's vocal coach, coach who helped him do Elvis to now do this. That's exciting. The trailer looks phenomenal. There's a fast turnaround on this movie, which is like my only nervousness to it. But anytime James Mangold has a brand new movie coming out, it has to be in my top 10. Because every single time he makes a movie, it just really clicks, or at least most of the time, it clicks on my wavelength and really works for me. And I think this is summing up to be maybe one of his best films yet. Let we get into my number two, and this is, at the start of the year, I think it was my number one most anticipated film of the year. Well, no, because I had Deadpool, Wolverine, and Dune, but this is like top three. And now leading in, I thought this would be my number one for the rest of the year but there still is one more film above this, but my number two is Nosferatu, a film that I know people who saw it last year and utterly loved it. And it's Robert Eggers who has done a phenomenal job, and I've loved almost all of his films. I've liked, really liked The Lighthouse, but I didn't think there was staying power for, with that one, but whether it's The Witch and The Northman, both of those movies have stuck with me for countless years and e easily are two of my most recommended movies that I've ever recommended. And Robert Eggers as a director has been talking about making a Nosferatu movie since The Witch. And ever since I saw The Witch, I was like, him talking about Nosferatu, I need you to remake this. And I never thought he was actually going to be able to make this version that he's wanted to tell. Because it just seems like he's gone back and forth if it was ever going to happen. And now it's been shot, it's been filmed, we have two trailers out, and both of them look immaculate, look terrifying, look amazing. And it looks very Robert Eggers. And that is what intrigues me about this, is that I don't care who's even in this, which there is a fantastic lot of cast. Nicholas Holt, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Willem Dafoe, Lily Rose, Depp. You have all these people in there that you can get instantly excited about, but that name Robert Eggers doing a vampire movie called Nosferatu, that is what excites me, and I cannot wait for this film. My number one most anticipated film of the year premiered, I think, at Cannes Film Festival earlier this year, and that is Anora. Anora is something that it has always been intriguing to me, and I've been excited for the movie because I've wanted to see more of Mikey Madison. I think she was so good in Scream 5, and I don't think she's really gotten enough to do afterwards. But it's also because of Sean Baker, who every time he makes a movie, they could be like the most wildly insane, what the fuck kind of movie am I watching? But in the end of the day, it always feels realistic. It touches on a part of like, our American culture or general, our culture that doesn't feel like it's touched on enough in mediums like this and feels so personable and like you're a fly on the wall. The Florida Project, uh, Tangerine, and of course, uh, Red Rocket, all wild movies, but ones that have always sufficed and intrigued me. And I'm not here to say that I think Sean Baker, like Sean Baker's like one of my favorite filmmakers, but he is one that's kind of rising up there. And even if I haven't loved all of his movies, they're ones that I just love to recommend and Anora just seems like the perfect blend it feels like pretty woman but for this territory and it feels like that may have a little bit of a darker side to it and a little bit more of a realistic approach not as Hollywoodized and that all for me makes this easily a recommendation and easily my most anticipated film of the year especially because of every single bit of praise from anyone who has seen Anora. Anora just seems to be right up there with all the best, and I cannot wait to see this movie this October. Top 10 most anticipated films for the rest of the year. Please leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. I cannot wait to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. Do you agree with me? Do you not? There are a lot of picks and a lot of films that I may have missed that just don't have release dates yet, such as like Daniel Craig's Queer, I don't think has release dates yet. That looks great as well, but let me know down below. Of course, until next time, guys, stay classy and have a great rest of your day.